I love the I power love the play. Power glove. It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah, well, uh, just keep your power gloves off her, pal, huh? John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Immersion RC Power Play DVR. This is an external DVR module that you can use for your Fat Shark or other Fat Shark style first person video goggles in order to get a higher quality DVR recording feed. This records H.264 at 60 frames per second. So especially if you are racing and can't afford the extra weight of a GoPro, you are going to get much, much better footage out of this. Much better footage than even the latest Fat Shark goggle, which is the Fat Shark HDO2 with Rapid Fire that I'm using right here. Now, why is that? And that's because Fat Shark has neglected to put the latest DVR module available on this goggle. They have put it on one of their box style goggles. Uh, and you can also find this better version DVR on the Orca goggles. Uh, and that really almost makes me think like, what is this? Is this the best bad product that we've ever seen? Or is it the worst good product? I can't really understand the thought process behind the development uh, of this product. <sighs> Immersion RC is sort of an odd duck in FPV. They make such great, great products. The rapid fire module that's on my Fat Shark HDO goggles are made by them and it is by far the best module around. It has a lot of insanely great features that we've been wanting for for so long, such as the ability to see what channel you're on while manipulating this little control module. And this adds a lot of those great features, but really all we wanted was a better DVR. And they gave us that. But uh, there's a few shortcomings. So the reason why I think they call it the power play is because you can actually use this as your power supply for your goggles. The terrible, horrible decision though was made to try and make the size a little bit smaller by using 18500 cell batteries in here, not the standard 18650 cells that we use throughout this hobby. Yes, 18650, this Fat Shark case that the HDO2 ship with use 18650 cells, guys. So why is it that Immersion RC decided to go with a non-standard cell that nobody has? People have tons of these already. Uh, and supposedly their reasoning was, well, we didn't want it to be too big on the side of your head. This is already using that and it's already on the side of your head. Like, I mean, look how much, if you take this little case thing off, uh, look how little it would increase the thickness of this thing, guys. A quarter inch, a quarter inch, a quarter inch. Is that it? That's what you're telling us was going to be too big? Oh. What a misstep here. I, you know, it's really just a bad decision. It was a bad decision that was made. Let's just not mince words, but this product is great and the footage is good. It is better. I'm gonna maybe show you like one comparison video. A lot of other people have already done that. Make no mistake, the footage is better. It's a lot better. It's incredibly better. But is the additional steps to your recording workflow worth it? So since it has these terrible, awful cells in here, the battery life of this thing is way too short. Even if you have to buy extra cells like I've done, I went and plopped some additional money in addition to the $90 that this thing costs to get some of these EBL 18500 cells. This was like another 15 or 20 bucks just to get these. It's still not enough juice to be able to run this um, the way that you want to run it, which is all day at a flying session. This will maybe get you, you know, two or three hours, but you need more, you need more time. So what do you end up doing? You end up using your regular Fat Shark goggle battery to power it and you only use these batteries to power the power play. 
and then you use the long cable. This comes with a long cable like this that has two ends, one to power your goggles. You don't use that and one to go into the video output. You do use that. So if you have your goggles on, this ends up being your workflow when you go to the field and you need to record or fly. You gotta put your goggles on your head like this. You gotta take this cable and find the power hole. Now your goggles and rapid fire are on. Then you gotta turn this thing on. You turn this thing on by a long press of this little green power button. So you wait three or four seconds, that turns on. You gotta make sure you have an SD card in here. You gotta make sure this cable is on. You gotta make sure this cable is on. Then you gotta take these little three things and you only need this one the way I'm doing it. And you gotta find a little hole. It's like a quarter inch in front of this one. I've gotten pretty used to it now so I can do it without looking. Plug that in. Then after you have this powered up, you should be seeing your video feed on here. Um, and then when you wanna record, you push the little jog wheel in, that'll start recording with a single beep that we're used to, which that part is good. Then when you're done, you pick this up and stop recording. But what do you do with this? This is already on the side of your head now. What do you do with it? Do you clip it to the back of your head? No, that doesn't make any sense. So I've struggled with how to go about putting this. It's easier to put it on the side of the table with you, but what happens? You forget that it's there, you get up, you yank it off. I've put it like in a pocket. Like if I had a shirt pocket, like that would be good, but this shirt doesn't have a shirt pocket. And a lot of times I'm flying out with a t-shirt or something that doesn't have a pocket, so that doesn't work. I've tried putting it in my pocket, but it's a pain to bring it in and out, and you can actually accidentally um, turn off your recording uh, when you do that. Um, there is a little clippy right here. I've used a radio, uh, <laughs> I've used a radio uh, strap and I've clipped the little thing on here and I wear it on my neck, sort of like, now I'm just like an FPV Flav of Flav walking around with this little screen. Everyone's like, what the hell is that? You fake, fake ass Iron Man looking. I mean, it's crazy, dude, it's crazy. What do you, what, how do you do this? I thought maybe I could strap it to my arm like the power glove. That's really what it reminded me of. And like the power glove, this thing and its idea and its build quality and its design are absolutely beautiful. They're captivating, they make you want it. This product was designed exceptionally well. The screen on it is really beautiful. The navigation is quite serviceable. Their battery indicator on here is outstanding. You can check the battery level without turning it on. Everything about it is great, except the fact that they use the wrong type of cells. So now I have to have two things hanging off of my goggles and that's just a little bit too much um but the footage is worth it because it really is better now i already messed this up once on a time where i was getting very critical footage um, but thank goodness i was actually comparing this at the time so i still got the footage on my goggle but normally i'd only be recording one or the other so I happened to have some really cool footage where a large bird flew right by me and I got some cool DVR of that, but otherwise that footage would have been totally lost. And so you really need to train yourself to get used to using this thing. I don't know, it's like Fat Sharks, like terrible adoption rates mean that they haven't put the DVR, so who do you blame? Do you blame Fat Shark? Do you blame Immersion RC? I mean, it's not Immersion RC's fault that Fat Shark is not putting the right components in these goggles. They are really giving us a great ability to capture this footage, so you really have to applaud them, even though it's a pain in the butt. So if you use in the configuration that I've spelled out, you get some better cells, you put them in here, you only power this, it can last all day, right? It can last you a good six, eight, 10 hours, and that's what you need right the other nice thing is it has usb-c thank the heavens good job on that tony uh so you can plug that in that can charge it now they have said in a few posts that this doesn't balance the cells so can that damage them can it be dangerous i don't know i've been charging this using that uh i mean why wouldn't you and then in a random facebook post tony alluded to that fact what does that mean tony I don't know. 
Uh, so, props to them. It's good. It's great. If you're a high-level racer, I would almost say, like, have your spotter run this so that they can capture your DVR. But as a pilot, when you're already trying to manage getting to the line in a high-stress, high-profile, high-stakes race, do you really want to complicate your workflow of getting to the line, focusing on everything you got to do by managing this additional piece of equipment? Um... The footage is worth it though. It really is good. And they've given us what we wanted, what we needed, what we asked for. Um, even if it had the 18650 cells, it would still be one extra thing to carry, but it would be nice if this could supply your power. Um, then it would really eliminate one thing hang hanging off your goggles. You could use this for an on off switch. Um, but I almost have learned by one time I actually had everything, the one time I failed was because one of these cables was out. So I had gone through the whole setup process, but I forgot to plug in one piece. I can't remember if it was goggle side or DVR side. And so I almost think it's better to verify that you see the image on your screen before you hit record. So I don't know, is it worth 90 bucks? I think it probably is if you need that footage, but really what it's making me wanna do is sell both of these things and go get myself a set of Orca goggles that has this DVR functionality included. Thanks guys.